Good morning. Right now on Denver 7 News at 5 o'clock, we are following some breaking news. A Wheat Ridge police officer is in the hospital after he was stabbed multiple times. Yeah, a crazy attack here. Denver 7's Jessica Crawford is live near the scene at 44th and Rob with the latest from police. Jessica. That's right. The scene is clear right now and officers remain deeply, deeply concerned about that officer who was stabbed. So right now, Reetwich police say that that officer is with his family in the hospital trying to recover. That stabbing took place right here at this RV park. I'm just going to give you a look at it right now. So officers tell us they did get a call about a stolen U-Haul that was doing some damage here at the Prospect RV park, damaging a fence. We did see that U-Haul being towed off Two officers responded to the scene and when confronting the driver, one of those officers was stabbed multiple times. Police say that they quickly responded, getting that officer to the hospital and getting the suspect into custody. Neither of their names are being released right now. Officers do tell us again that they're deeply concerned about the officer who was stabbed here. They do not know the extent of his injuries and they are hoping for the best. That video that we just showed you was that U-Haul that was stolen that was doing that damage back here being towed off. Live from Wheat Ridge, I'm Jessica Crawford, Denver 7. Yeah, a, a scary situation there this morning. Also breaking overnight, an Aurora toddler is safe after they were rescued from a stolen SUV. The two-year-old in the car were originally on South Abilene Street just after midnight. Officers were able to stop the vehicle, though, in Adams County and arrested the driver. Taking a live look outside right now from our mile high camera. It is going to be another day with some winds. We're seeing it pick up and the temperatures are dropping. Coldest day of the week here, Lisa, but we are going to see some more mild temperatures coming soon. We will a great weekend forecast, but it's chilly out there. When you step yeah. out the door, we're right now in the teens in uh, some spots in the mountains, even some single digits. Wind chills have dropped down well below uh, 10 degrees here in town, so some single digit wind chills. Now take a look at the alerts. We have winter weather advisories, still some winter storm warnings in effect for the mountains where we'll pick up at least a few more inches of snow today. That again compared to the high fire danger that covers southern and southeastern Colorado. Wind speeds today will be at about 15 to near 30 miles per hour, so it's going to be gusty at times. Fairly calm this morning, but even a wind of about 5 to 10 miles per hour is going to make a temp of 12 feel like zero. So make sure your kiddos have a jacket this morning. Take one, too. You're going to want to layer up. It will be cold right now. Teens, 20s. Take a look at our highs. We'll be at anywhere from 40 to about 45 here in town. 20s in the mountains, Jason. So yeah, the coldest day on our Super 7 day. I'll show you when we're back to 70 coming up here in a few minutes. Yeah, that means we're going to have those icy areas remain for us in the high country from all the snow that we had yesterday. You can see near the Eisenhower Johnson tunnels, the plow trucks are out and we do have some icy conditions, some snowy conditions at the highest elevations over I-70 up on Highway 40. You're going to find some pretty slick conditions uh, up that way as well. So just plan accordingly if you're going to be doing any uh, traveling tour from the high country. Take a look at the drive here on I-70 in the lower section. They had some overnight constructions. You still see some cones set up here along I-70 heading east on over to the lowered section. And so that is going to slow you down slightly, but at least lanes are open for now. The rest of the drive looks okay for you anywhere you want to go, including there on I-70 out to the east side to or from the airport. There's been some slight delays on the RTD A line going to or from the airplane uh, airport this morning. So just plan uh, uh, maybe on some delays as you check the RTD website. Yeah, speaking of the trains, investigators in New York City are looking for a person of interest in the attack yesterday on a Brooklyn subway. 10 people were shot and 19 others were hurt. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest on the investigation and stories from commuters who survived the attack. Overnight, police towed away the U-Haul van, believed to be connected to the person of interest in the investigation, 62-year-old Frank James. Police say James rented the van and the keys were found at the shooting scene, along with a credit card used to rent the U-Haul in Philadelphia. If in fact the, the three things, the gun, the credit card, and the U-Haul are all linked to one person, you may well have this mass shooter. The rampage unfolded during morning rush hour Tuesday. Witnesses say a subway passenger wearing a neon green construction helmet and vest put on a gas mask set off two smoke bombs and open fire. I saw a lot of people coming out of a train station. Um, one of them was injured. Uh, I believe it was a lady getting shot right on her leg. She was screaming, uh, you know, she was in a lot of pain. Police say the attacker fired 33 shots with a semi-automatic handgun, wounding 10 people before the gun jammed. 
which they say likely saved people's lives. We are truly fortunate that this was not significantly worse than it is. Videos show passengers in a smoke-filled subway car pounding on a connecting door trying to escape. As the train car pulled into the subway station, terrified passengers ran onto the platform and the gunman escaped. But police say a backpack was left behind, filled with loaded magazines, commercial grade fireworks and a hatchet. They also say they recovered a Glock handgun. At a hospital last night, New York Governor Kathy Hochul visited some of the victims, including Huari Benkata, who was among the first people shot. You see like a smoke, black smoke bomb going off and then and then people bum rushing to the back. This pregnant woman was in front of me. I was trying to help her. I didn't know there were shots at first. I just thought it was a black smoke bomb. She said, I'm pregnant with a baby. I hugged her and then the bum rush continued. I got pushed and that's when I got shot in the back of my knee. Faith Abube, ABC News, New York. Yeah, a chaotic scene. And in response to the shooting, Denver police and RTD stepped up patrols at local transit stations. RTD has told its officers to be on high alert. They're also reminding passengers to report to operators or police if they see anything suspicious on trains or buses. You can always make an anonymous report through the RTD app. Well, today is day two of some important meetings for the Colorado Board of Education. Today's agenda includes an update on bills at the legislature, possible changes to school accountability rules, applications for a new online school, and the future of a Colorado Springs high school, as well as public comment. One topic up for discussion during public comment is revised social studies standards. The committee recently decided not to add information about LGBTQ perspectives to standards for students below fourth grade. The Colorado Board of Education received thousands of emails on this particular topic, both from those who support and oppose the LGBTQ references in the curriculum. Some board members say the suggestion is a threat to equity, while others say teachers shouldn't be teaching gender identity. Parents should. This week's meetings will continue tomorrow when the board will talk about the future of the Adams 14 school district. The district is on a strict deadline to submit a plan for how to turn around years of poor performance. If the board rejects the plan, the district could be reorganized or the flagship Adams City High School could even close. Mm. Well, new this morning, Pre-K for All Coloradans is going to the governor's desk. The Senate passed legislation to create the Department of Early Childhood to oversee the program. It would provide 10 free hours of preschool for Colorado families per week and help streamline the process to access preschool. State officials hope the first year of enrollment will be the 2023-24 school year. The Nuggets are back at practice today. Game one of their first round playoff series against the Golden State Warriors is right here on Denver 7 Saturday night at 630. And Nikola Jokic is earning another honor. He was named the Western Conference Player of the Month, averaging more than 31 points, nearly 14 rebounds and seven and a half assists per game. The Rockies are now tied for first place in the National League West. They're <laughs> four to one. Okay, it's early, but yeah, yeah we're, we'll celebrate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're four to one after beating the Texas Rangers yesterday. The play that has everyone talking is this catch by Randall Greitschuk. The Rangers hit a shot to right center, and Greitschuk took away a home run wow. and saved the game. Yeah, this was the number one play on ESPN. The Bron the play even had Broncos quarterback Russell Wilson tweeting, uh, "Wow, what a catch there." <laughs> Save the game. Hey, listen, I told my husband uh, when this season started that this was our year, and he mm. laughed at me. I, I'm four well, and because one. Because you've been saying it for how many years? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> 15, yeah. 18, since the last uh, time we were trying. Yeah. <laughs> We've got temperatures this morning in the 20s. We'll be in the 40s this afternoon. It's going to be a chilly and windy day today in the mountains. More snow, highs in the 20s. It'll warm up. We've got a great Easter weekend forecast. Details coming up. Right now, the overall drive doesn't look too bad. We're looking at good driving conditions coming in from the west side of town. This is 6th Avenue right there at Sheridan. So this is the eastbound side coming in from Lakewood. Not seeing any problems here this morning, which is good news. We'll take a look at the rest of the drive times as well as some of the icy conditions up to the west in just a minute. There may no longer be a need to carry cash or credit card. One company wants your payment to literally be in the palm of your hand at all times. Affordable housing is hard to find in Colorado right now. If you're looking to buy, look into some options available. 